in this video you're going to discover exactly how many batteries and solar panels are needed to power your loads effectively. I've laid out a comprehensive guide to sizing your off-grid solar system, from analyzing the different loads, selecting the battery voltage, determining days of autonomy, calculating battery size, finding your amount of sun hours, and lastly calculating how many solar panels you need. I'll be presenting this video in an over-the-shoulder format, making it easy for you to follow along with the calculations. Plus, for those who prefer a more direct approach, there's a link in the description to a calculator where you can input your own data, and it will do the heavy lifting for you. Let's dive in and get your off-grid solar system perfectly sized. Step 1. Analyzing the loads. The first and crucial step in sizing your off-grid solar system is to list all your appliances and determine their usage duration. Let's start with a system one of my clients has requested. He has several LED lights totaling 20 watts, which is being used for about 8 hours on a typical day. These lights are DC powered, straight from the battery, so no need for an inverter. Now let's move on to AC devices. The fridge is 100 watts with a 30% duty cycle. This means the compressor is active for about 8 hours a day. Remember, if your fridge is in a warmer location, the usage might increase. The laptop charger indicates a power draw of 35 watts and is used for 4 hours daily. Additionally, a 50 watt TV needs to be powered for 1 hour a day. A quick tip for appliances with short run times like a kettle. Convert their usage into hours. For example, 5 minutes divided by 60 minutes becomes 0 0.083 hours. Regarding the inverter, he uses a 1000 watt model to handle the fridge surge power. It's important to note that a 1000 watt inverter has a standby consumption of around 20 watts. Larger inverters, like a 3000 watt model, uses about 30 watts and hybrid inverters can consume up to 50 watts. This standby power also needs to be factored into the total load calculation. After tallying up these numbers, we arrive at a total consumption of 1630 watt hours. We will use this value later in our calculation. Step 2. Selecting battery voltage. Choosing the right battery voltage is a critical decision in setting up your off-grid solar system. As I've discussed in previous videos, it's advisable to limit the current in your DIY off-grid system to 100 amps. Let's quickly recap why opting for a higher battery voltage is beneficial. It reduces wiring costs. It increases overall system efficiency. It decreases the current requirement for the charge controller. All these factors contribute to significant savings in your installation. To maintain the current below 100 amps, here are my recommendations for inverter sizes based on the battery voltage. For a 12V battery system, use a 1000W inverter or lower. For a 24V battery system, choose an inverter ranging from 1000 to 2000 watts. For a 48V battery system, you can go up to a 5000W inverter. If you need more power, consider adding multiple inverters in parallel. For example, if you're using a 1000 watt inverter with a 12 volt battery, the calculation would be 1000 watts divided by 12 volts resulting in 83 amps. To ensure safety, we apply a factor of 1.25 or 125%, which brings us up to 104 amps. Therefore, a 100 amp fuse would be appropriate for this inverter. However, Let's not get sidetracked and focus back on the main topic. Step 3. Days of autonomy. This step involves deciding how many days you want your system to run solely on battery power, assuming no solar input. This is known as days of autonomy. I recommend planning for 3 days to ensure a reliable power supply, even during consecutive days without sunlight. This duration is a balanced choice for most setups. However, if you're connected to the grid, one day of autonomy might be sufficient. 
Step 4. Calculating battery size. Now, let's dive into some calculations for both lead acid and lithium batteries. There are two key factors to consider in this calculation. For lead acid batteries, remember that you can only use about 50% of their capacity. And they have an energy conversion efficiency of around 80%. That means that for every 100 watt hour you put into the battery, you would get about 80 watt hours of usable power. Referring back to our load analysis from step 1, where we calculated a total daily usage of 1630 watt hours, the calculation for 3 days of autonomy would be 1630 watt hours, which is a daily usage, times 3, which is a days of autonomy, times 2 which is 50% usable capacity of the battery, times 1.25, which equals 80% efficiency, equals 12,225 watt hours. To determine the required battery capacity in amp hours, divide this number by the battery voltage. 12,225 watt hours divided by 12 volts equals 1,018 amp hours. For lithium batteries, the scenario is more favorable. You can use up to 80% of a lithium battery's capacity, and they boast a higher energy conversion efficiency of 99%. Applying the same load analysis, we get 1630 watt hours, which is a daily usage, times 3 equals the days of autonomy, times 1.25 equals 80% usage, times 1.01 equals 99% efficiency and we become 6173 watt hours. Dividing this by the battery voltage gives us 6173 watt hours, divided by 12 volts equals 514 amp hours. This comparison clearly shows that lithium batteries require a much smaller capacity than lead acid batteries, for the same energy needs, thanks to their higher efficiency and greater usable capacity. Step 5. Finding out your sun hours. Now it's crucial to determine the average sun hours your location receives, especially during winter, as this will impact your solar panel requirements. For this, we use a handy tool called PV Watts, available at the link in the description. Let's walk through the process together. First, enter your location on the website. I will use Houston, Texas as an example, since many of my subscribers are based there. Once you've confirmed the location on the map, proceed to the System Info section. You don't need to modify any fields here, just head straight to the PV Watts results. In the results section, pay close attention to the left column. It displays the average sun hours for each month. For sizing our solar system, we focus on the month with the least sun hours, as this represents the most challenging period for solar power generation. In the case of Houston, the lowest sun hour month is December, averaging about 3.47 hours per day. Understanding your location sun hours during the least sunny month is key to ensuring your off-grid system can reliably generate enough power year-round. Step 6. Calculating solar panels. The final step is to determine the number of solar panels needed to charge your battery bank within a single day especially during the least sunny month. This calculation ensures your system is equipped to handle the most challenging conditions. Let's start with lead acid batteries. Since you can only use 50% of lead acid's battery capacity, you only need to recharge the second half. For example, if your total battery capacity is 12,225 watt hours, you will need to recharge 6,112 watt hours in a day. This reduced figure reflects that you're only recharging from 50% to 100%. Now, divide this daily recharge requirement by the average sun hours. Using our previous example of Houston in December with 3.47 sun hours, the calculation would be 6112 watt hours divided by 3.47 hours equals 1760 watts of solar power. Therefore, you need around 1760 watts of solar panels to recharge the lead acid battery in a day. For lithium batteries, 
the calculation is slightly different. Considering you can use 80% of lithium's battery capacity, let's say you need to recharge from 10% to 90%, using the same total capacity of 6173 watt hours, you will need to recharge 4938 watt hours in a day. Again, divide this by the sun hours. 4938 watt hours divided by 3.47 hours equals 1420 watts. So for a lithium battery, you will need about 1420 watts of solar panels to ensure a full day's recharge during winter. Remember, these calculations are based on a worst case scenario, typically the winter months. During summer, your system will recharge more quickly due to long sun hours. But it's crucial to size your off-grid system for the most challenging times of the year. And that's how you calculate the solar panel requirements for your off-grid solar power system. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you want more information like this. Are you confused about solar power? Get my 7 free solar diagrams through the pinned comments below.